In this video, I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways to create an AI customer support chatbot for your business. And one of the best parts is you do not have to write any code. This chatbot can then be embedded into any website, like this fictional restaurant called Oak and Barrel. The chatbot can then be accessed by clicking on this chat bubble, and this chat window can also be customized with your own color scheme, logo, and a few starter prompts. When you interact with this chatbot, it will actually collect information about your customer and store their details in a back-end system, making this a very efficient lead collection chatbot. So as example, let's enter Max as the name and Max at test.com as the email. The user can now ask questions about the business and the AI model will answer the questions from a custom knowledge base, which we can load and maintain on this platform. For example, let's ask, what are your current specials? And the model will be able to answer this question from a knowledge base, which we uploaded. Also, we can use this platform to view all the conversations that users have had with our chatbot, and we can also collect on this button to display all the user information that was collected. And here we can see the user and email from this previous conversation. And also we can set this up to collect any amount of information that we want. If we have a look at the flow, you will notice this data collector node, which we can use to add as many fields to this collector as we want. So you could in theory also ask the user for their phone number and whatever else you need. Furthermore, we can also use a knowledge base reader to maintain the content in this knowledge base. I've simply uploaded a Word document containing all sorts of information about our restaurant. But you could also add as many documents as you like. And in fact, you can also scrape information from a website from a YouTube video or whatever else. And finally, adding this chatbot to your website is simply a matter of copying the snippet and then adding it to your website or getting your developer to do it for you. But this process is really simple and it works on pretty much every website platform that you can imagine, like Squarespace, WordPress, or whatever else. And we will have a look at embedding this in an HTML website towards the end of this video. Now let's have a look at building this chatbot. For this, we will use a platform called Vectorshift, which offers a generous free tier, so you will be able to follow along with this tutorial and embed your chatbot into your project. Let's click on Get Started, and afterwards you should see a dashboard like this. Let's create a new pipeline by clicking on New. Then let's click on Create Pipeline from Scratch. You will now be presented with this blank canvas. Let's start by adding both an output node and an output node to the canvas, like so. The input node will allow the user to send a message and the output node will simply be used to provide the final response. For example, we could connect the input node to the output node and then test this out. We can do that by clicking on Run Pipeline. We can go to Chatbot and then we can send a message like hello world and the bot will simply reply with whatever we passed in. Now that's not what we want, right? So let's break this connection by double clicking on this X and let's add an AI model to this. We can do that by clicking on LLMs then let's add the OpenAI node, like so. Then let's have a look at what we need to do with this LLM node. Of course, if we simply wanted to create a very simple chatbot, we could take the user input and pass that into the prompt of the model. We could then take the response of the LLM and pass that to the output node, like so. Let's also change the model to the newer GPT-40 model. And let's go ahead and test this by clicking on Run Pipeline. Let's say something like, hello. And this time we're getting a response that's generated from an AI model. Fantastic. Right, but there's still a few things that we want to do. When the user interacts with the model, it first needs to ask the user for their name and email address and only continue the conversation after we've collected that information. So how do we do that? We can give an AI model specific instructions by entering some text in the system prompt. In other words, we can use the system prompt to provide very specific instructions to the model and affect its behavior. For instance, let's say, 
You are a customer support agent for a restaurant called Oak and Barrel. Your name is Sammy. Also, we want to tell the model that it can expect to receive a question from the user, but it also needs to receive information from a data collector. And let me show you what I mean. In order to perform the data collection, we need to add a data collector node to the canvas. We can find the data collector by going to chat and then we can add the data collector node to the canvas, like so. We can now use this data collector to specify all the fields or information which we want to collect from the user. For example, let's add a field called name with a description of the name of the user. And of course, we can provide any example that we want. Let's add another field. This time, we want to collect the email with a description of email of the user and a simple example of an email address. Feel free to add more fields if you want, like a phone number, etc. This node will attempt to generate the questions for these fields, but we're simply going to instruct our model to ask very specific questions. So let's click on settings and let's deselect auto-generate questions. Now let's take the user input and let's pass that into the inputs of the data collector. Now we need to pass the details that we've collected so far to the AI model as well. So we need to take the output of this node but now we have an issue. There's no way for us to attach this to the model as this prompt field is already being used. But thankfully, we can create additional inputs using variables. Let's break this connection. Then in the prompt, let's create placeholders for both the user's question as well as the collected data. So let's type some text like question and just below it, let's add a variable which we can add by clicking on this insert variable button. Let's give our variable a name like question and you will see the name of that input changing on the left over here. And below this, let's create a variable for the collected data. Let's call this collected data and let's also give this a variable and let's call this variable collected data. Fantastic. Let's take the user's input and let's attach this to this question field. Let's also take the output from the data collector and let's pass it into this collected data input. Our AI model will now have access to this information. It's also a good idea to add additional instructions to the system message to tell the model how to use these variables. So let's add the following to the system message and feel free to pause the video to see what I've entered here. I'm simply saying you will receive collected data which will contain the name and email. If there is no name, ask what is your name? If the name is present, but there is no email, ask what is your email. If you have both, then proceed with the following instructions. So after our model has collected all this information, we then want to do the following. If how can I help has not appeared in the conversation history, then respond with how can I help. Let's go ahead and test this out. Ensure to click on chatbot and let's enter hello. And this time it is asking us for our name. Let's enter John. Now it's asking for our email. So let's enter john at test.com. And now we can start chatting to our chatbot. Right, so our model is able to collect information from us, but it's not very helpful past that point. From here, we want our assistant to assist the user with questions about our business. For this, you want to prepare some sort of knowledge document, whether it's a PDF document, an Excel spreadsheet, or whatever else. In this example, I created this FAQ document for our restaurant. It contains a whole bunch of questions and answers for our business. So how can we add our knowledge base to this project? Thankfully, it's very easy. Go to knowledge base and add the knowledge note to the canvas. For the knowledge base reader, we want to create a new knowledge base. Let's give it a name. I'll call mine Oak and barrel and optionally you can add a description as well then click on confirm you can now edit your knowledge base by clicking on edit knowledge base initially this will be blank let's add documents to this by clicking on add document and under loader type select the type of data source that you want you could add a url so that vector store would scrape information from a website but i'm going to select file and then I'll click on this plus button to upload the file from my local machine. Then I'm going to click on add 
And this will add this file to the knowledge base. So if you ever need to update your knowledge base, simply delete this file and upload an updated version of that file. Now that we have our knowledge base sorted, let's have a look at how we can attach this node to the rest of our project. First, let's have a look at the query. This is simply the user's message. So let's grab the output of the input node and let's attach it to our query, like so. Now we want to add the results of this knowledge base reader to the LLM as well. And again, there's no space on this node to do this. So let's add another variable. Below collected data, I'll create a new variable called context and let's also click on insert variable and let's call this context and that will create this context input on the LLM node. Now we can simply take the output of our knowledge base and pass that on to the context. Let's also adjust our system prompt to ensure that the model will actually use the knowledge base to answer questions. So I'm going to add the following prompt to the system prompt and feel free to pause the video to see all of this but this is simply saying that if how can I help has appeared in the conversation history and you have received both a name and email in collected data, then answer the question based on the context. In other words, the results from the knowledge base. If you are unable to answer questions based on the context, then respond with, I am unable to answer the question. This will simply ensure that the model will not make up its own answers. We can also add this last part if we wanted to, to just ensure that the model has actually followed all of these instructions. That is everything we need to create this customer support chatbot. And next we will have a look at publishing this so that we can use this chatbot from outside of VectorShift. But first, if you enjoyed this video and find it useful, then please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's test this out. So let's open the chatbot window and let's enter something like, hello. Let's ask it a question about the business, like what are the current specials? And our chatbot was able to retrieve this information from the knowledge base, great. Now let's have a look at publishing this chatbot so that we can access it from outside of VectorShift. And lastly, I'll show you how to embed this chatbot into a website. To publish or deploy this chatbot, simply click on this first button to deploy changes. Then let's also go to this configure pipeline button and let's give our project a name like Oak Ant Barrel Support. Then let's click on deploy as. Then let's click on chatbot and now we can configure our chatbot. First, let's give our chatbot a name. Let's call this Oak Ant Barrel. Optionally, we can also provide a description, but I'll simply leave it blank. Let's click on save. Now let's click on functionality and this will now bring up a preview of our chat window. Let's change this information. Let's open up functionality and let's change the display name to Oak Ant Barrel. Then we can also change this welcome message to something like Oak and Barrel Support. We can also change the name that is used for the user. So let's say you, and let's change this to the name that we gave the assistant. We can also change the welcome message, any error messages, etc. We can also change some other attributes like keeping the chat open and some other things. If you are on one of the paid plans, you can also disable this powered by vector shift option, which will simply remove the branding at the bottom there. And you can also get an AI model to automatically generate follow up questions, which I'm going to disable. We can also change the styling of this chat window. So you can replace this image URL with a different icon but I'll simply leave it as this for now. And you can also change the color that's used throughout this theme. I'll simply leave it on the default values. Let's then click on save. Then lastly, let's click on export. You can now share this chatbot with other people, perhaps your client or your team members, by copying this URL or clicking on open chatbot. And now anyone can use this link to interact with your chatbot. But what we want to do is embed this chatbot into a website. We can do that by scrolling down and then copying this code snippet over here. Now this is something that can be quite difficult to demonstrate in a tutorial like this, as there are just way too many different web platforms out there, but you will notice this little text down here saying that this code snippet can be used to embed your chatbot into Wix, Squarespace, Framer, Webflow, 
WordPress, and pretty much any other platform. For this demo though, I've created this HTML page for our restaurant. And all we have to do is simply copy this iframe over here, and then in your website, and again, each of these platforms will provide some solution for doing this, but within the body tag, in fact, before the closing body tag, you simply want to paste in that snippet. So based on your platform, simply look up options for adding snippets to the body tag. After doing this, I can open up this HTML file and I'll instantly see this open barrel pop up so I can now close this pop-up and if I ever wanted to go back and make any changes to the look and feel of this pop-up, we can simply go back to vector shift and let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go to chatbots and we can now see our open barrel chatbot over here. To make changes to the look and feel of this chatbot, we can simply click on edit. Let's click on functionality. Let's go to styling. And let's change the accent color as an example. And let's make it this sort of color. Let's save this change. And if I go back to my website and refresh this, we will now see this pinkish color being used as the primary color for this chatbot. Now let's see if this is actually going to collect information about our user. Let's say hello. For the name, let's enter Sean. And for the email, let's enter Sean at test.com. And of course, we can ask questions about the business like, do you offer a kids menu? And the assistant will answer questions from the knowledge base. We can now view the lead information by going back to vector shift. Let's go to chatbots. Then let's click on view chatbot manager. Let's change the chatbot to oak and barrel. Here we can see that conversation that we just had and we can click on this little button to view the information collected within this specific chat. So we can see that name and email over here or if we have several conversations, we can simply click on collected data and that will display all the leads collected for all conversations. For example, if I go back to the previous example I had where I had several conversations, collected data will show all the different leads. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the comments below. And if you would like to learn more about Vectorshift, then check out the series over here.